Um, thank you. And uh, so he, he said that I've had a little over 16 years experience um, as a professional web developer, but uh, the story about why open, why the open web matters so much to me actually starts um, much earlier than that, back in 1991. Um, does anybody recognize this, by the way? No, nobody? All right, so the, this is Gorillas. Um, this is a game that was distributed by Microsoft with MS-DOS 5. Um, so yes, pre-Windows era, um, but this was, as I look back, uh, a big turning point for me, for what I was going to do for the rest of my life, even though I had no idea at the time. Um, it, when I first saw this screen, I was just excited because it was a lot of fun. Um, you typed in a angle and velocity and your gorilla threw an exploding banana at the other gorilla and you tried to hit it. Um, and you can see that they've missed a lot of times and hit a bunch of the buildings. But the reason that this turned out to be so important to me was not because it was a fun game, but rather because it was open source. And this was my first experience with this. And I was only nine years old at the time, um, but the curious nine-year-old in me scrolled down through all this code. This is what you would actually, you'd have to look at this to start the game. It opened like this uh, just to get into the game. So I would scroll down and look at it. And there was no possible way that nine-year-old me could have written something like this. Um, but what I could do is make changes and tweaks. And all along the way, while I was just having fun because uh, I could play gorillas using like the gravity of the moon and the bananas floated different, um, what I was really learning was how code worked and how computers worked. Um, and I didn't have to start at the bottom and learn to develop and be able to build something like this from scratch. Instead, I was able to pick up where they left off um, and build on top of that. And quite a while later in my life, that turned into something that I have used to um, provide for my family. Like, that's what I do now. Um, but this concept is much bigger than just the web. So I want to take a look back a little bit at where some of this started and then bring it back around to the web. As a matter of fact, um, this guy named Bernard of Chart, he, um, he taught this concept to his students. He said that we, the moderns, by the way, the moderns at the time, um, this was in the early 1100s, but they referred to themselves as the moderns. We, the moderns, um, it's not that we're so much better than the people that came before us. We're actually like dwarves, but we're perched on the shoulders of giants. And um, his students r would write about this, several of them, um, through the following years. And this is 900 plus years ago. But this concept turns out to be very important in this age. And if, if many of you have no idea who this is, but the concept still sounds really familiar, it's probably because there's this like little known scientist guy named Isaac Newton that said the same thing about 500 years later. If I have seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. And this was the guy that as we look back, we see him as a giant. I mean, this guy gave us calculus. He gave us Newtonian mechanics, which is how we know uh, how planets move and even how a penny is going to fall when you toss it off a building. It's allowed us to um, have jet engines and skyscrapers. This is all built on this stuff that Isaac Newton gave us. But he said, I'm not a giant. It's just that I've been able to pick up where other people left off and build on top of that. And this concept has allowed us as humanity to make very consistent and rapid um, progress forward. And, and it's this kind of openness that's let that happen. Um, and so to bring this back around to our digital age a little bit, um, uh, this is the code that, that I was able to build on top of. Um, but while it was open source, which was important to me, um, it wasn't completely open. And I want to say that there's more to being open than just being 
open source. As a matter of fact, you see that one of the first words up there is copyright, right? Copyright Microsoft. So while I was able to learn from this, and that's extremely important and extremely valuable, um, there were a lot of limitations around it as well. I couldn't uh, legally give this to somebody else that I thought could learn from it. I couldn't um, legally distribute my gorillas on the moon that I had you know, modified it to be um, because it, it wasn't actually completely open. There's more to being open than just being open source. So what is it? When I'm talking about the open web and why open matters, then what do I mean by open if it's not just open source? Um, <clears throat> I do think that there are three basic things um, when I'm talking about open that I mean, uh, if, I, if I say that something is open, I want it to be all three of these things. And the first is, in fact, open source. That is important. Um, but open source isn't all of it. And as a matter of fact, um, Richard Stallman, who, for those of you who don't know who that is, he is the founder of the Free Software Foundation. Um, he's the one that wrote this GPL, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, the license that WordPress is licensed under. Um, but he wrote this really great piece called Why Open Source Misses the Point of Free Software. It's very long, but I encourage anybody who's interested in the future of the open web um, to go and read that. It's, uh, again, it's why open source misses the point of free software. Um, and he says that open source isn't enough, and, and I agree. I think that there's more to it. Um, if, if I'm going to say that something's open, I also want it to be usable for any purpose. Um, this is really important. Um, you can use WordPress for anything. Uh, I would like to see more tools on the web that you can use for any purpose. You can use it for something that I don't agree with, something that I don't like, and that's good. I think that that continues to um, push us forward. <clears throat> and the last thing is that I don't, if something's open, then you can't be trapped in it. And this is where, when I look at the current landscape of the internet, I worry a little bit. Um, we have become more and more uh, reliant on the web. The web is no longer just something that's fun, right? It's no longer just a resource. It's now a very integral part of our daily lives. Um, we, we, we have a lot on it, not just our personal stuff where you may have put um, all your family photos up on Facebook and you don't keep them many other places, but also our businesses, our livelihoods are built on the web. They're reliant on the web. It's, uh, it's something that we, ha that we have, it's like the foundation that we've built on top of, um, but the problem is as we build on top of the closed foundations, the things like Facebook and Wix and Shopify and those kinds of things, I worry that it's not good for the longevity because we have lost the ability to guarantee that the things that we build are going to um, continue to do the things that we need them to do and also that, that the people that come after us are going to be able to pick up where we left off. Uh, it, we've given that control away to other people, to other companies. And I want to look back again at Isaac Newton. Um, he gave us all these fantastic tools. And like I said, it's, it's allowed us to do things like build the, sky, the skyscrapers that you see around um, and safely go up to the you know, 30th floor and not worry that the building's about to tumble. But imagine if Isaac Newton had said, you are welcome to use my mathematics and my, the, all this stuff that I've laid out in my Principia, uh, all these forces that I've calculated to build these things, um, but you gotta build it on my foundations. I've started a foundation company and you have to build on my foundations. Just sign right here and use one of my foundations, but you know, oh, what are you signing? Oh, uh, well it just says that the foundation is mine and the stuff on top of it um, you know, you're, you're going to build on top of it. 
we look at that and we say, well, why would we want to do that? What if in the future he said, uh, I don't like glass buildings. It blinded me the other day, so I'm no longer going to allow glass buildings on my foundations. But you had invested a lot of time and effort and money into building some glass hotel, and that's how you had made your living, and now you can't. And when we look at that in the physical world, it's very obvious that there's a serious problem in building your livelihood on top of something that somebody else has total control over. And now as we do that in the digital realm, we tend to try to turn a blind eye to it because they have useful tools, because they have um, you know, some, some great things and, and it makes it easier for us. But is that ease worth the trade-off? And I don't think it is. I think that it endangers um, our ability to uh, really rely on this thing that we, we all do rely on, but we sort of are turning a blind eye to the parts of it that uh, endanger its reliability. And so that brings me back around to WordPress. I said that I was going to talk about the GPL for just a little bit. Um, licenses can be super boring, and I get that. Um, but I, I actually think that it's so important, um, the license that WordPress is licensed under, and there are other things that are licensed under this sa these same kinds of licenses, and I think that these, all of them, not just WordPress, but WordPress is part of it, are extremely healthy for the web, for this thing that we've come to completely rely on. Um, you can tell that this license, which gives you four basic freedoms, uh, was written by somebody who's very techie programmer kind of guy because it starts with number zero, um, which seems a little silly. But the, the number zero freedom is the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Um, and I think that as we all see our culture around us changing and we all realize that um, people need a voice, even those people that I don't necessarily agree with, they need a voice and they need to be able to use these kinds of tools for their purposes, for their passions, for the things that they care about, even if it's not something that I'm passionate about or that I care about. And yes, there's some of my code in WordPress, um, but you can use it for things that I don't like and I think that's good. I think that's healthy um, and I think that that's important. The number one freedom is, your, is the, basically the part about being open source, your freedom to look and see how it works. Um, and that doesn't matter if you don't understand the code. Um, you could maybe learn it. If you don't want to learn it, you could ask somebody that knows how to understand it to look in it. Um, but the point is there's no black box. There's no part of WordPress that is um, some secret magic that you can't know about because those kinds of things are dangerous. How do you rely on those if you can't guarantee um, that it does what you want or need it to do? Um, and so that's the part about being open source. The number two freedom is the freedom to redistribute it. You can give it away to anybody. And that's important because Everybody, like I said just a minute ago, needs a voice. Everybody needs to be able to have that. Not just a select few, not just the group that, um, that a, a few people like or that are friends with certain people, everyone. You can give it to anyone. Um, and you can modify it and you can change it and still give away your modified versions. Um, that is uh, the, the last freedom that you have. Um, and the, the best thing about this license and these freedoms is not just that they exist, but that no one can take them away. Like this, the way that the license is written, it's such that if, if I want to change it, I can't. If Automatic or Matt wants to change it, they can't. No one can. Um, WordPress is licensed in this way, and it is, these freedoms are built in and will always be built in, and that's healthy. And so that's, that's everything that I, I have about that. I don't know, do I have time for questions? I know we were running a little behind originally, but I tried to go fast. I, 
I can take a couple questions. Awesome. So this is me. I'm Aaron Campbell. Um, I work for GoDaddy now as a full-time WordPress core contributor. I love getting the chance to continue to push forward some of this open software. Um, and I'd love to take a couple questions. Anybody? The first question is always the hardest. Oh, in the back. Yes. MIT or GPL? <laughs> so, yeah, when I said that licenses aren't, inter or, you know, aren't um, entertaining, I guess, that's definitely one of those kinds of questions. Um, I, so I actually, I really like the GPL. I, I know that it's greedy, um, but I actually think that that can be healthy. Uh, but honestly, I'm of the mind that any of these really open licenses, like both of those, um, are fantastic. Both of those are very healthy going forward, and I'd much rather have the GPL and the MIT work together against the closed than have them uh, fighting over which is better. <laughs> yes? Uh, you don't see a, a philosophical conflict between the second and the third point uh, that you made of being able to use the thing for any purpose, even if it's something you disagree with, and yet not being trapped. Like, wouldn't they have the freedom to build it in a way that says, we can change this later on? So one of the big differences is because that also includes the, uh, so I guess the question in case, because this is being recorded, was the question uh, of does letting people modify and distribute um, endanger the part of open where I was talking about not being trapped? Couldn't somebody modify it in such a way that uh, ultimately gets people locked in? Um, and I think that the advantage there is that it's, open source and it's required to be distributed as open source, uh, which means that while you may not be able to move ahead with some sort of breaking change that that person has made, uh, you still have what you built on in a way that's not only usable but also still modifiable. You could hire somebody to make the changes that you need um, without ever having to be completely stuck. Um, being able to tell how everything works also makes your data very portable. You could always uh, take that out and move on somewhere else. Uh, so I think that that only works if you're required to distribute along with the source code, which is an absolute requirement. I think we're pretty much out of time. So I will be around through lunch and the rest of the day. Um, if anybody wants to talk about this kind of stuff, I love it. <laughs>